Okay, once we have a sense of what a function is, what they look like, how to graph them, how to manipulate them, even the notation, how to represent them, what I want to start thinking about now is what the algebra of functions, how do we combine them? And there's a couple of ways um, that are very simple. For example, we can add them, we can subtract them, we can multiply them, and we can divide them. So let, let me demonstrate it to you with an example. Um, it's a pretty straightforward idea. Suppose I have two function, f of x equal 2x minus 3, and g of x equal 5x plus 4. Right. Now, um, so I have these two function, right? um, and then I can use uh, these function to build a bunch of other functions. For example, I can add them, right? So I can take f plus g of x. Um, this is just a notation, by the way. Don't let it bother you. Uh, if it does bother you, then you can write it as f of x plus g of x. Or if you feel lazy, you don't want to write too much, you can even write f plus g. Okay. So what we do is do, we just take the function f and add it to the function g. So equal f of x is 2x minus 3. That's your f of x. Plus g of x is 5x plus 4. So that's g of x. And then now we add a uh, like term to like term. So 2x plus 5x is 7x. And minus 3 plus 4, that's plus 1. Or we can subtract them, right? We can take f minus g of x. Or if you can write it the other way, uh, f of x minus g of x or f minus g. So I'm going to take uh, function f, which is 2x minus 3, 2x minus 3 minus the function g, which is 5x plus 4. Be careful when you subtract a function, you need to put a parenthesis in front of it because we have a negative in front of function here. It's actually a negative one, but we don't write it there, right? It's invisible negative one there. So you ha have to distribute the negative one into each of these term of the function. So, um, so I have two X minus three minus five X minus four, which is equal to negative 3x minus 7. Okay. Or we can look at the products of two function, right? f times g of x, or f of x times g of x, or f times g for short. Now we just take 2x, oops, I want to do it in blue. Function f, which is 2x minus 3, and times the function g, which is 5x plus 4. And then you can FOIA this out. I don't know why we do that, but, but let's just FOIA that out. 2x times 5x, that's 10x squared. I have the inner product, which is negative 15x, and the outer product, which is positive 12x. So negative 15, neg uh, positive 12 give me negative 3x. And then um, the last term, negative 3 times 4, that's minus 12. Okay. And lastly, we can divide them. Okay. We can take f divided by g of x, or f of x divided by g of x, or f divided by g for short. So this become for well, function f is 2x minus 3, and function g is just 5x plus 4. Okay. Now, um, there's a little word of caution when it comes to dividing functions, because when you're dividing two function, there is a little change in this domain. Remember, function only define when they uh, when we when when we can think of a value of x 
and plug it in to produce a number. Notice that the domain of f of x and g of x are all real number, right? You can pick any real number, you plug it in, two times a number minus three, produce another number, five times a number plus four, produce another number, no problem, right? But when you, but when we divide two numbers, once I divide them, once I have a denominator, there is a potential that the denominator can be zero. Right? So for example, if I plug in, if I plug in x equal negative four fifth here, so five times negative four fifth plus four, uh, the five cancel, the negative four plus four, that's zero, right? So when I have x equal negative four fifth, I will produce a zero in the denominator, which is not allowed, right? So, so the domain of f divided by g of x actually, so domain, it will be all real number except where x equal negative four fifth. So be careful when it comes to the domain when you're dividing two functions. Okay, so now I want to show you a brand new way of combining these two functions. Right, suppose I have function f of x equal 3x minus 2, and then I have function g of x equal x squared plus x plus 1. Right. Uh, we talk about adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing these functions, but what about putting these two functions together, right? composing them into one function in a following sense? So I first take x value and plug it into f. So I put, first take an x value and plug into an f function, and then I actually get some sort of output. So for example, I'll get an output y from f, right? And then I will use this output y to plug to plug it in a, a function g. So, so visually, it might look like this. So if I have an x value, I'm going to plug into a machine f, right? And then machine f spit out some y value, right? And then I would use this y value as the input for the g machine. And then the g machine would spit out some, some other output value. So, uh, for example, let's do a zero, zero example. If I, I want to evaluate f of zero, so what is f of zero equal to? Um, I would go back up to the function f of x and plug in zero for x. Okay? So, so I see f of zero is three times zero minus two, that's minus two. So f of zero equal minus two, and then I would take that minus two as the input for g. So I would write g to all of that. So g of, well, f of zero now is, the f of zero now is negative two, right? It's negative two. It's negative two. And then we will take the negative two for, for the input uh, of g function. So when I go back up to the g function, whenever I see an x, I replace with negative two. So I have negative two square plus negative two plus one. So negative two squared, that's four minus two plus one, four minus two is two plus one is three. So g of f of zero is equal to three, right? Sometimes um, we would write it in, in the following notation. Uh, we would write g and then a little circle and then f. This does not mean a multiplication. It means a com composition of two function g composite f of x. That's how they read it. Um, so let's do another example. How about if I want to compose, um, how about if I want to do 
uh, F compo uh, compose G of uh, maybe three, well, G of three. So I can rewrite it at F of G of three. Right? So first I'm gonna plug in three for X in a function G, right? So if I look at, if you look it back up to your function G, your function G, right? Whenever you, you see an X, you plug in three for X. And then once you got that answer, once you got the answer, you take the answer and you plug it into F. So what is G of three? So G of three is, so let's see, G of three is equal to three squared plus three plus one, which is nine plus three plus one, which is 13. And now I'm gonna use this 13 right here and plug into F. So, so let me rewrite it here. This is equal to F of 13 now, right? Now it's F of 13. So F of 13 is equal to three times 13 minus two. Three times 13, um, which is 39, minus two, which is 37. It's equal 37. So, so F composite G of three is equal to 37. All right. Okay, so in the next video, uh, we will take a look uh, of a few more examples to get a real feel how to compose function. Okay, see you up next.